Hello, Sumitri. Hello, Karachi. How lovely to have you here. Hello, Adamba. Waloba, hello. Just going from the name that I can see on the Zoom. On the Zoom uh, screen. Please feel free to type in your role, where you come from. We've got Sumitri from India. She's an educator. Just going to try something. You're seeing the wrong screen, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. Hold on one second then. Welcome, everybody. We're just going to wait a little bit longer just until the time. Oh, I can see some familiar names here, which is so nice. Please do let us know if you've attended before. You can absolutely write that in. That would be lovely to know. Some of you must be getting familiar with Alex's and my voices now and our faces. Aren't you lucky? Okay. Right. Have we got, who have we got, Alex, in the comment section? We, yeah, we have got Taz, Tasnim now, which are who I recognise. I know we've had Tasnim. She is a high school educator from South Africa. Erica Demba from Kenya. Hello to you. We, uh, we've already heard from Smitri and Karachi. They've typed in who they are. And I think Jerry Clee, I know we've seen you before, Jerry. So I saw you, I saw your name. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. Okay. It's trying to run that fine line between not taking up too much of your time and starting on time, but also wanting to make sure that everybody gets a chance to join. Um, but I think we will, I think we will start because it's important. It's a Saturday and it's important to not take up too much of your time. I've actually been thinking it's Sunday the entire day, so I'm completely <laughs> out of kilter. Um, hello everybody and welcome. My name is Eleanor Sykes. Uh, I think you can see me at the top of your screen and I am here with Alex Starr and we both work for the Commonwealth Education Trust um, delivering the Teach 2030 programme, which I hope you all know about and have completed some of our courses or participated in some of our courses. It's great to hear, see you here today. Uh, as you may know, or you, this may be your first workshop with us, each month we run uh, a workshop twice. This is a new development actually, on a Wednesday and a Saturday, usually at the last Wednesday and Saturday of the month, for 15 to 20 minutes on a key teaching point to reflect on, to consider and to share experiences. Although it is slightly more about us presenting due to time, but that's not to say we don't love hearing from you and we may well diversify into making them more collaborative in the future. But we, as I said, we just don't want to take up too much of your time today. So this is actually the first of a six month block based around planning lessons. So lesson, lesson planning in essence. Um, you may have seen on social media, we have been posting posters and flyers telling you the dates of the next five and today and the next five subsequent workshops and their topics. And they're all based around lesson planning, which sounds perhaps slightly tedious because let's be honest, sometimes lesson plans can be slightly tedious, but we will aim to make it interesting and to encourage you to reflect and continue improving your own teaching practice by improving your lesson plans. I think it's important just to let you all know here, I don't know how many of you are new today, that Alex and I are both teachers. I was a teacher for 20 years and have written more lesson plans than I would care to remember. But funnily enough, I never minded writing lesson plans because if I taught a lesson without having thought it through at the beginning, generally it wasn't a very good lesson. So I do believe very solidly in the purpose of lesson plans. And that's what we're going to have a, a brief conversation about today. So, she says, and then can't move on the slide. Okay, so what we're going to talk about today is how can we identify what an effective lesson plan looks like? And our brief workshop objectives are, we're going to refresh, refresh we hope you're thinking about why we plan lessons, explore some evidence of the impact of a good lesson plan, 
and we would love you to share your experience of planning lessons in the chat and to learn from others. Alex will regularly tell me to be quiet because she wants to feedback and share what you're saying in the comment section. So it is very important to hear from you as well. So why is a lesson plan so important? I think if we take out the word lesson there and just look at planning, and we've got some inspirational quotes here down the side. Now, sometimes when you're presented with quotes, you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I actually think these are quite interesting. This Benjamin Franklin one, I'm sure you've all heard before, but by failing to prepare, you're preparing to fail. Most of us can't just wing things and sort of, as the expression is in the UK, fly by the seat of our pants. We actually do need to plan. Otherwise things can often go wrong. Alexander Graham Bell went to the telephone before anything else, preparation is the key to success. And this one I hadn't heard before until I started researching our planning course and I thought it was rather great. Always plan ahead. It wasn't raining when Noah built the ark. I don't think we necessarily plan for a flood, but I think you get the gist. So by preparing for our lessons, it means that we promote meaningful and effective lessons. So by writing meaningful and effective lesson plans that are well thought through, these ones are the ones that have a clear purpose both to you and the children that you teach. So a, le a lesson plan serves two purposes, is to help you clarify your thinking, where you're going, what you want the outcome to be, but it also provides structure for your learners when you are actually teaching the lesson. So why plan a lesson? So there are many people who have far higher qualifications than I do who've done research into why planning is so important. And so Richard James Rogers here in his book, The Importance of Planning. Why plan a lesson? Well, it gives the teachers the opportunity to think deliberately about their choice of lesson objectives. Now, I'm actually going to go back briefly to when it says to think deliberately. I really like that use of the word deliberately. So rather than thinking, oh, I have to write the lesson plan for my maths lesson, you're really thinking, what do I want to achieve in this maths lesson? So you're deliberately dwelling on what the lesson objective is going to be. And we're going to talk in the next uh, workshop about how to create really effective lesson plans. The types of activities that will meet those objectives, the sequence of those activities. So what comes first, what comes next? So the, oh, the idea of scaffolding or building a ladder for the children. First, they need to do this, then they need to do that. Materials, resources that you're going to need. You need to have an idea about how long you think each section will take. And of course, how the students should be grouped. How are you going to, are they, where are they going to sit in the lesson? Are they going to be working in groups with their peers? Are you going to mix them up according to their attainment? What are you going to do? So these are things that a teacher needs to really think about. And I think it's worth just going back to where it says number two, the types of activities that will meet those objectives. We all know the different attainment levels that we have of the learners in our class. So another key element of writing lesson plans is of course thinking, how are you going to meet the needs of all your learners? I remember one, one uh, cohort that I taught many years ago, of seven and eight year olds, which is called year three in the UK. I had a really diverse range of attainment levels. So I had some children who were performing well above average. And then I had three or four children who'd had significant challenges. But it meant if I was doing a maths lesson, sometimes I had to plan five different activities within that maths lesson, all based around the same objective to hit each of those different groups needs. So we've got here two very basic lesson plans. I think, I don't think it, it won't take a rocket scientist to work out which one perhaps is more effective. But what we're doing with them is we wanted to illustrate a point, because if you look at lesson plan A, objective, what do you want to achieve? Well, I want to get better words in my work. So this is for the, for the learner. The learner wants to get using better words in their work, in their writing. What are you going to do as the teacher? Tell the words that, tell the students that some words are better than others. And you have written, take, takes 10 minutes. Secondly, let them improve their homework. So go through their homework and look for better words to write. And then at the end, you're going to, they're going to hand it in to you and you're going to give a summary. So that does have a structure of a sort. But I just want you to have a think about what is missing from that lesson plan that maybe you can see in lesson plan B. And do please write some of your ideas down in the chat while, while I'm speaking. If you then have a look at the differences 
between lesson plan A and plan B at the objective. If we just focus on the ob objective. In lesson plan B, objective to produce, improve vocabulary and apply these words to a homework. If you were a learner, which of those objectives do you think would tell you more clearly what was going to happen in the lesson? Because it's very important that the children know the purpose of the lesson as well. If they said, uh, I need to get better words in my work, I'm not sure they would really understand what you wanted them to do. A couple of people are saying lesson plan B. If anybody's got any comments as to why, it could be to do with the objective, as Ellen has mentioned. Um, we've got obviously B, but why obviously B? What is it? You're absolutely right. What is it about B that's better, do you think? Whether it be maybe you've had time to look at the other tasks as well. And, uh, uh, tell me, tell us exactly why you think it's obviously B. Thank you for commenting B, though. That's lovely that we're seeing so many comments. Any reasoning? I'll, I'll continue and then Alex, just do tell me if somebody's writing some comments. Will do. Thank you. For me, the reason that lesson plan is so infinitely better is, as I said, the objective, if a child was asked what was the purpose of the lesson they'd just been taught and they said, well, I had to write better words, improve vocabulary, vocabulary, and then I had to put these words into my homework, they know what it is they have got to do. The first activity, the teacher is going to check what does the word vocabulary mean. They're going to explore different words for walk. They're going to ask the children to consider which ones they uh, which ones they like the most. And the teacher's also written down the strategy they're going to use, which is the no hands up. Obviously, you're not going to write down everything you do in a lesson on a lesson plan, but it does need to be the way that you go through thinking what might happen before you actually teach. Task two. They're going to get their homework out and they're going to circle five words that they want to improve. So in there, that's very clear. What are they going to be doing? Then they're going to share it from their partner. Then they're going to discuss the improvements. And what is the teacher doing? Circulating throughout the room. So this lesson plan also shows us the teacher's activities as well. And then finally, going to share the good practice and praise. Ask the students what the impact has been. So you're, it's very clear where you're going to get the feedback from the children in this lesson and summarise at the end by reviewing back over the lesson objectives and why they should think about choices of words. Now, it may be that actually if you, you would write a lot more detail than this in a lesson plan. This is a, still, I would say, quite a simplified one, lesson plan B. But it does give you a very a much clearer structure. And I always think that my lesson plan is good if somebody else could come in and teach my lesson. Can somebody else come in and teach from your lesson plan and understand what it is that you are trying to achieve? Any feedback, Alex? We've just got a couple of people saying lesson plan uh, B is better than A. Uh, we've got A is too vague, it lacks substance, which mm -hmm. is really nice. Um, I think what's interesting is that you're absolutely right about it lacking substance and where the substance might be. I think Ellen has discussed that a little bit about the teacher's role, but uh, please feel free to write some comments in about what you prefer on lesson plan B. How is it more helpful than lesson plan A? The other thing it would be interesting to hear your thoughts on is how you actually feel about writing lesson plans, because they can be very time consuming. Um, and that's why it's really important to make sure that the time that we take to write them is time that's well spent and reflected in the lesson itself that we deliver. So what is the impact of teaching a good lesson in your classroom? Now, this clearly sounds uh, rather basic because what you would say is, well, the children learn. But think about what happens if you have a good lesson plan that supports you writing a good and uh, um, teaching a good lesson. You, a good lesson plan will help you to establish a positive and consistent classroom environment because you've thought about what you're doing beforehand and allow students to feel supported. Beginning lessons by giving clear and constructive instructions allows students to feel motivated and understand connections between lessons. And in fact, that's something I haven't really mentioned enough. But of course, another reason that we lesson plan is to make sure that we connect the learning for the learners. So our lesson plan needs to consider what have the children learned previously, what are they going to learn in this lesson, and where are they going next. 
And when it says at the beginning of this one, beginning lessons by giving clear and constructive instructions, to me, that's interpreted as making sure the learners understand the learning objective that you're about to teach them, but also what they are going to do in the lesson to achieve that learning objective. So maintaining attention and using appropriate, appropriate, can't speak today, sorry, pacing allows students to remain engaged. So if you've thought through how long is this going to take, how long is that going to take, clearly things change all the time when you're teaching, you know, it's rare that a lesson plan goes exactly the way you think it's going to, so you do have to be flexible. But having a, a, an approximate idea of how long you want to spend on something is really important. Smoothly transitioning between the activities, it allows the students to understand the connections between the learning. So how are you going to move from one activity to the next? Might be you only have one activity in the lesson anyway, but thinking about those transitions. Evaluating what has taken place in the lesson allows you to understand what your students need next. So that's at the end of the lesson, you'll be reviewing the learning with the learners, but obviously also when you finish and the children are no longer with you, reflecting what went well there, are there areas that I don't think they really understood? Are there things that I need to develop for next time? What would I change? I used to write in red all over my lesson plans so that the next year, because often I would use them to start for my subsequent year's lesson plan. I'd, sometimes I'd write in red, this did not work. And then I'd go, okay, well, I won't be doing that again. Or I would write ideas for myself about what I needed to do to improve it for next year. We're not perfect as teachers. And it helps you develop positive teacher-student relationships by the, the, if, if your learners know that you have spent the time and the effort in planning their lesson, there's a much higher chance they're going to spend time and effort learning in your lesson. Children are far cleverer than we realise and they can tell when a teacher is, as I said, flying by the seat of their pants and hasn't really put the time and the thought into thinking about what they want to achieve in that lesson. So in our planning course, you'll find this poster and actually you will receive it in uh, the follow-up emails and you can download it and print it off for your classroom or your where you meet as teachers or for your own teacher portfolio. And it's, as I said, even though I was teaching for 20 years, I regularly, regularly had training on lesson plans, writing lesson objectives all the time to make sure that I was doing a good job. So I actually find this very helpful to reflect on even now when we're planning our workshops. So starting off with your objectives, is it specific and connected to previous learning? Can the children see how it fits in with what they are learning? What did I teach previously? And is it clear what I want them to do? What do they need to do to learn it? And have I thought through the steps? As I say, we're going to be talking about writing lesson objectives in our next workshop. Um, and actually, if you follow us on social media, we will be putting up some posts before it to try and really get the conversation going about writing lesson objectives. And we'd, be, we'd love you to participate as much as you're able. Does it provide opportunities for you to check what the learners know and if there are any gaps? It may well be that the learners haven't fully understood what you thought they had in the first in the previous lesson. Do you need to plug some of those gaps, cover something again? Do they know what you think they know? Are you sure? Does it provide time for you to model and for the learners to then practice. It's not all about you as a teacher. It's about the children actually practicing what it is you're teaching them. So how long is it gonna take you to model something? And do the learners have enough time to then really practice what you've demonstrated? And does it include activities for all learners? Those who can work independently and those who need support. If you use this as a guide, have it in a folder somewhere you can see it regularly. Each time you're planning a lesson, you will be remembering all the key ingredients of what makes a good lesson plan. Those key ingredients are what we're going to be exploring in the subsequent courses, and they're also detailed in our planning lessons for all learners course, because each section of a lesson plan has its own criteria. So each section is something that needs to be considered separately to then go together to form this wonderful cohesive learning experience. Alex, is there anything in the comments? No, we've got a couple of people um, asking about the resources and the workshop. 
-hmm. And just to uh, make it clear to everybody that you will be receiving these. Uh, we know that these posters are very useful and also the workshop is, we hope is very useful. And you will get a link to all of the materials that are on this in a post event material e uh, email that will come through along with a link. So just to confirm, you will get this poster. Thank you, Alex. It's also worth noting, please do keep an eye on our teach2030.com website because we are developing and building out the workshop section. So if you click on the workshop section, you'll get information about all the current ones that we're planning on delivering, but also links to the videos of the previous ones. Uh, we're actually building out the website at the moment, so slightly bear with us, but we'd love your feedback. And you'll also be able to click and download resources that we've shared previously, find the old email notifications and so on because we know that sometimes people um, sign up and are unable to attend or perhaps we discuss something in the meeting and you think oh I'd quite like to review that again so do keep an eye on the workshop section I love this poster Alex and I did it together and I, I think it's great <laughs> <laughs> I think it's really helpful I hope you agree so very briefly what else are we going to cover in the next six month series so in August, writing lesson objectives that produce results. September, making lesson objectives meaningful to your learners. So how do you actually get the point of your lesson objective across to the learners? October, breaking down the learning, modeling, modeling what the children are going to do. Teaching your role during independent learning. What do you do when the children are doing the uh, working on their own? And December, reviewing the learning. They are generally, generally the last Wednesday and Saturday of the month, always at 3 p.m. UK time, although I can see we shift to 2 p.m. GMT there. Um, but we've chosen these times because they work with most of the teachers in the communities that we support. It might be quite early in the morning for some people, or it might be in the afternoon for others or in the evening, but most people in the Teach 2030 community can, can, can make those times. And the time changes just for the UK. It's yeah. because the UK changes time. Absolutely. So don't, don't worry about the fact that that changes time. We try to keep it consistent in whatever country you are. Just and we're actually, um, we're actually doing, the Wednesday one is a Facebook Live and the Saturday is a Zoom. Um, things are changing a little bit as we try and work out what best suits all of you, our community. So do please let us know. In fact, would you, could you just ping in the chat now? Do you prefer a Zoom link? or a Facebook Live. It'd be really helpful to know what you think. We might send a survey out about this as well. The only thing with the Facebook Live, if we, um, if you haven't signed up, the post event materials, you're gonna to have to go straight onto the website to have a try and find some. So people are saying Zoom, Alana. Really? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Zoom is preferable. We, we much prefer Zoom. <laughs> Zoom is Zoom is perfect. Everybody, everybody, not one person is saying that Facebook is better. Oh, that's that's quite good to know because Alex and I yeah. are learning how to use Facebook, and it does this twenty second delay, which makes it very difficult to have this kind of interactive um, opportunity. And we really do want to hear more from you. And in the past, we have our our participants here have spoken, and you just can't do that in a Facebook Live. No. Um, Everybody's yeah. saying Zoom. Every single person, Alana. Zoom it is then. Zoom it is, absolutely. I tell you what, now, now, now say in the, in the chat, is Zoom something that you have learned to do since the pandemic? Because it's become much more part of my life since the pandemic. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. yeah. I, were you Zoom users before or just since the pandemic? <laughs> yes, I think yes from yeah. Faria is very much, yes, I've learned to do it since the yeah. COVID. I think I think we all have to be honest yeah so um yeah oh it's, I can so. see lots of our ambassadors here Bestus, mm -hmm. Charlotte, Joyce fantastic so we've got some of our teach and 30 ambassadors on the call Mercy sorry if I've left somebody out and just pinging through but it's really great to see you all absolutely so um that is the end of our brief workshop today, uh, reviewing effective lesson plans. Is there anything else anybody would like to share? Um, any takeaways that you could just put down quickly in the chat? Even if it's just, I'm going to have a little bit of a rethink about my lesson objectives, or it's reminded me that I need to think a bit more about how to connect the lessons to the previous learning. 
One thing that we will be discussing in the lesson plans uh, workshops is that we're very aware of the challenges where there are very strict requirements that you have to get through a curriculum. And sometimes there simply isn't enough hours in the day in the school year to get through the curriculum that you have to get through. So it does mean some learners can get left behind because you simply have to keep on moving. But that is something that we need to think about and how we can make sure that those learners do not get left behind. But we won't go into that in depth today. It's just something to put in the back of your mind. I'm going to stop sharing that. Uh, actually, no, I'll leave that one up there. Any, Alex, anything in the chat? Nothing as of yet. Just a reminder that you are going to receive post-event materials. They will be coming out with the recording as well. Um, so you will be receiving this. I've had a couple of people asking again about that. Uh, Tasnim, lovely to see you again. And it, she says that, oh, I've just lost her because people are, people are typing lovely things saying thank you. A good summing up of an effective lesson plan. Good lesson plans help when an educator is absent, which is true. Somebody can step into your shoes very uh, nicely so your the lesson, Absolutely. the learning continues. Uh, Faria says thanks a lot. Sadat says thank you. Such a perfect presentation on lesson oh, Very grateful. What's very great? grateful to you for attending. Thank you so much. If you do print off um, the poster, and you put it up somewhere in your classroom in your teacher portfolio, we'd be thrilled if you could send us a photograph of how you use our resources. Um, we'd like to use it on social media and our newsletters and so on, as we try to build and develop our community. Absolutely, and you can feature on that social media. Yeah. You the face of the social media, uh, mm -hmm. if you can get us a picture. Uh, Giwa, sorry Giwa if I said that wrong, being empathetic and putting the students in thought makes the lesson plan more deliberate thank you so much for the insight oh good uh, that's great to hear Willowba. thank you so much i can now see the chat which is much more interesting than just seeing my face <laughs> okay is there anything else otherwise we'll wrap it up so you can all carry on with your saturdays but we hope very much to see uh you in the next one do please complete the short survey that comes out in the email. It takes no time at all and it helps give us feedback and we can make sure that we um, continue improving what we're doing. Good refreshers. Yes, that's it, exactly, Tasnim. <laughs> all right. Thank, Thank you, you very so much. Bye-bye. See you next, see you next month. See you next month. Bye-bye.